Mark Miller of the Yetta Love Project, and today I'm going to tell you about uncanny valleys in declarative language design. Yetta Log is a declarative language in use at Google, but I want to emphasize that today's talk has lessons that are not specific to declarative languages, although those are our emphasis. Uncanny Valleys comes from a 1970 paper that predicted that as robot appearances became more human-like, that there would be a perceptual anomaly, that at first, as they became more human-like, they would also become more likable. But after they reached a certain threshold, they would fall into the uncanny valley and create a disturbing perceptual experience. As they proceeded to become ever more human-like, they would make it through the valley and then skyrocket back to creating a pleasant appearance. What's responsible for this phenomenon is the discrepancy between the actual appearance and the perceptual expectations that it provokes. As the actual appearance improves, at first the expectations come along with it, mostly staying in sync, but as the actual appearance gets close enough to genuine human appearance, the expectations leap ahead to expecting genu genuine human appearance. And the difference between the two, the gap, creates this disturbing sense. The actual appearance disappoints the expectations that it provoked. As the actual appearance continues to improve, it closes this gap. The disturbing sense goes away and the pleasantness returns. We mean this only as a loose metaphor. Our concern here is not perceptual anomalies, but there are phenomena like uncanny valleys in programming language design. There's the language that we design and that we implement. And then as users learn our language, there's the language as they come to understand it. And sometimes the language they understand is a better language than the language that we had in mind. For example, the Java language as designed allows the virtual machine to throw a virtual machine error between any two instructions. If we took this seriously, it would be impossible to write any non-trivial program correctly. The JVM as implemented does not throw virtual machine errors willy-nilly. So the Java language that users have come to expect is one in which correct programs can restore invariance in finally blocks. This is a perfectly reasonable thing to expect of a language. And this discrepancy has stimulated efforts like the transactional treatment of virtual machine errors in the Joey language, a variant of Java that runs on the JVM. It's useful to view the language design landscape along the axes of expressiveness and automation. In the upper right is the magic perfect language in which users can ask for anything they want and whatever they ask for, the system gives them what they, what they want with no further effort on their part. Of course, we can't have that what we have instead in the upper left are general purpose languages in which users can solve any problem with no limit, but which are weak on automation. Users also have to figure out how to guide computation to compute uh, the answers they're looking for. On the lower right are the highly automated languages, where anything the user asks for, the language does whatever it needs to do to compute an answer, but the range of things users can ask for are limited. The languages in the lower right are the ones in which simple things are simple. The languages in the upper left are the ones in which complex things are possible. Today, we're going to focus in on the declarative language portion of the landscape, in which in the upper left, we still have 
general purpose languages in which there's no limit on what you can ask for, but which are weak on automation. The control information to guide computation to an answer is still a burden on the programmer. As the general purpose languages provide better automation over time, and as the highly automated languages become more expressive, they enter the intermediate part of the design space looking for a language in which simple things are, are simple and complex things are possible. As we explore the search space, we should expect to find uh, many local peaks, some of which are guarded by their own uncanny valley. Yetalog, like Datalog and Prolog, is a horn clause logic programming language. All of these languages have in common the syntax of the horn clause and its meaning as logic, in which the multiple rules of a predicate are an or, the multiple goals in a body are an and, and the colon hyphen is an implication. There is a path from x to z if there is an edge from x to z, or there is an edge from x to some y, and there is a path from that y to z. Each of these languages also treats the horn clause as code to be executed. In Prolog, the horn clause is executed exactly in the order that the, that the user wrote, giving the user complete control over the order of execution, and also leaving the user with complete responsibility to design an order of execution that successfully computes the answer. Data log leaves all these ordering decisions to the implementation enabling it to engage in all sorts of fancy optimizations uh, that enable it to compute the answers more efficiently than most users could have designed for themselves. Yetalog is general purpose. Its, its control defaults to data log-like, leaving ordering choices to the implementation, but it contains operational overrides, like the ampersand ampersand operator, for forcing left to right execution. When should Yetalog programmers use ampersand ampersand, and when should they use comma? If they use ampersand ampersand, when they could have used comma, they overspecify, denying the implementation optimization opportunities, wasting both their programmer time and machine resources. If they use comma when they needed to use ampersand ampersand, then they under, under specify and their program might not work. So to find out what Yetalog programmers actually do, we ask them to write the simple recursive programming language 101 factorial program. And this is what most of them wrote. Mathematically, this is a correct statement of factorial as code, does it successfully compute an answer? Well, let's contrast four versions of factorial written in Yetalog, all of which are correct mathematical statements of factorial. Fact A and fact B, by the Yetalog operational model, never finish, but nobody ever thinks to write them anyway. Fact C is like fact B, but with the addition of a stopping condition, the n greater than equal to 1 test. And the stopping condition is added in order to ensure that fact C finishes when it should. Does it work? Well, recall that Yetalog leaves ordering decisions to the implementation, so the implementation is allowed to always choose the recursive call before the stopping condition. And if it does, then the stopping condition is indefinitely postponed, and fact C doesn't do any better than fact B. The correct program that we had in mind is fact D, which none of our users wrote. 
fact D uses ampersand ampersand to force the stopping condition to be tested before the recursive call. Our implementation is actually smart enough to turn fact C to fact D internally, to always, to always generate a plan in which it, the stopping condition is in fact tested before the recursive call. In the language as we designed, fact D is the only one of these that is correct. In the language as we implemented it, fact D always works as the design demands, and fact C always works as the design allows but does not demand. What about the language as understood by our users? We need, how do users learn a language? We need to remember that they don't learn it primarily by reading the specification or reading any document that we, the language designers, write. Their primary route to learning a language is by writing programs and trying them out and seeing what they do. And then they form intuitive theories to explain their, these, their experiences to themselves. And fact C was the obvious program to try first, and the fact that programs like fact C always work correctly led them to expect that programs like fact C are correct. When we overlay these three views on each other, we get the following Venn diagram. In the middle is the sweet spot where all three views are aligned. In the upper left corner, the dark gray is also a sweet spot where all three views are aligned, the programs that must not work, that never work, and that nobody ever thinks to write anyway. Every other region in this Venn diagram is some form of misalignment between the three views. When we think about these misalignment issues in the context of languages like C++ or JavaScript, our mind leaps to the area in the, in the um, far right where users simply wrote a buggy program expecting it to work, find out that it's buggy and need to iterate uh, in order to debug their program. Much of computer science is properly concerned with shrinking this region, but that is not our concern today. Rather, we want to call attention to the uncanny zone that sometimes leads users to, to form expectations that point the way to a better language than the language that the designers and implementers had in mind. In the case of fact C itself, we could repair, we could rise to the challenge to meet their heightened expectations by simply changing the design to require the implementation to do what our implementation already does. However, we're not concerned about fact C specifically. Nobody wrote fact C until we asked them to. They wrote fact C because of lessons they learned from some more general category of program and what categories they form depends on the nature of the intuitive theories they've constructed and how they generalize. And in this case, we should expect the category of fact C-like programs to include the following multi-A program that does not, in fact, always work on our current implementation. Multi-A is multi-recursive. It contains multiple recursive calls in the body. Our implementation is good enough to turn multi-A into multi-B, putting the n greater than equal to 1 stopping condition first, but multi-A has two recursive calls and they can't both go last. And it might be that one of them embodies a, an, an additional stopping condition terminating what would be the infinite recursion of the other. And if the implementation 
always chooses the wrong one to go first, then the stopping condition might again be indefinitely postponed and we might never finish when the user would reasonably expect us to. So we've come up with this technique of unrolling mutual recursion, sorry, unrolling multi-recursion into the mutually multi-recursive mu b and mu c, where the depth of the mutual recursion is equal to the width of the multi-recursion, and each step of the unrolled mutual recursion steps through a different choice of which of the goals from the multi-recursion to try first. Mu B tries multi A's left goal first. Mu C tries multi A's right goal first. As a result, it interleaves progress on these two branches of the recursion. They both make progress, and if either one of them reaches a terminating condition, it successfully terminates the recursion. So this implements a static approximation of fairness. We believe this approximation is good enough for our engineering purposes. So by changing the language design to specify some form of fairness and implementing the unrolling technique, we expand the sweet spot to include this new category of program. In so doing, we don't necessarily shrink the uncanny zone. We change its shape. The language now behaves differently. Users interacting with this different behavior will form different expectations. And those different expectations will have different influence on how we further evolve the language. So what's going on here is really a process of co-adaptation where each of these boundaries shifts and changes over time in, react, in reaction to pressures caused by their misalignment with the other boundaries. It's a multi-body problem. And it is this dynamic that shapes our trajectory through the search space, occasionally leading us into uncanny valleys, but then taking this feedback into account leading us again out of them into better spots in the search space. Questions? <laughs>